The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You are tuning in to My Bumps Have a Purpose with Dr. Mel. Hey, you guys, it is the Thanksgiving holiday, and you know, it's coming up. It's gonna be so festive. Everybody's gonna be enjoying each other. Great food, great people, um, I hope, because uh, you know how that goes. So over the next couple of few shows, what we're going to do is we're gonna start discussing Thanksgiving. Um, I think this is a perfect time um, since we're headed into the holidays and many things happen during this time. Um, good and bad, actually. You know, we, we find a lot of deaths and things like that that happen during holiday season, which is not really great. I mean, um, and so, you know, we wanna hope that we, we send out enough love for people that they don't really feel like this is a bad time for them. You know, we've lost family members. Uh, we've lost a lot of people and, um, but yet people are still here. And so we should really be celebrating the life of those that are around us. So I don't want you to get depressed this year. Um, and you know, you know, some people are excited about presents and things like that too, because the holiday season is on, upon us right now. All the way through January, we're gonna be in the holiday season. And so we're gonna be talking about some things. However, I wanna take this topic to another level because it's one that embraces family um, dynamics. And it also, um, we're gonna talk about what Thanksgiving is as we're approaching these holidays. And you know, I know you're gonna be making your new resolutions this year. One of the resolutions I'd like you to make is that you know what, be consistent with the Father. Uh, and I'm talking about Jesus, be consistent with him and make sure that you are, are truly trying to be um, uh, uh, consistent with your time with him, what you're doing with him, and what he wants to do with you. So let's talk about what Thanksgiving means though. The natural definition is like a celebrated holiday. It's an annual holiday that we have in the US and Canada actually uh, celebrates harvest and other blessings over the past, uh, past year. So they do a lot of some um, things differently. But the spiritual definition means this. It means to respond to God's goodness and grace with gratitude and the quality of being thankful. That's what gratitude means. It means the quality of being thankful. Um, the word for giving thanks uh, in the Old Testament means to raise hands to God in gratitude. You should be thanking him because he, of your life, because you are alive, you're here, you're, you're living and breathing. You really should be thanking him. That's what Thanksgiving to me is all about. I remember the days of the turkey and all this good dressing. Now don't get me wrong, I do like the dressing. However, it's not all about that. It's about uh, giving thanks, period. You know, we don't just have to celebrate it on Thanksgiving. We can do this all year, every day. So let's see what the scripture says. First Corinthians 10, 10 through 13. I love the Amplified because I want you to really get it. It breaks it down for you. It says, and do not murmur, <laughs> meaning in unwarranted discontent, as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happen to them as an example and warning to us. I, I get a little nervous when I see the word examples and warning to, to us. They were written for our instruction to admonish and equip us upon whom the ages have come. Therefore, this is 12. Therefore, let the, let the one who thinks he stands firm, firm meaning immune to temptation, being overconfident and self-righteous, take care that he does not fall into sin and into condemnation. 13 says it this, no, no temptation, regardless of its source, has overtaken or enticed you that it is not common to a human. So here's the problem. Because it's, hum it's not common to human experience, right? 
However, it says, nor is any temptation unusual or beyond human resistance, but God is faithful to his word. That right there should tell you something. He is compassionate and he's trustworthy. See, that's the kind of person I need in my corner. And he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability to resist. That's why I like the Amplified. Even says your ability, but your ability to resist. So we have a choice right there. But along with the temptation, um, he has in the past and now and is now and will always provide. It says he has in the past and is now doing it and he will always do it. So he's done it in the past, he's doing it in your future and he will do it in your present. That's just what he's saying. He'll provide the way out as well. However, I do believe that you need to be a child of God first for that to happen. I do believe everyone gets a measure. However, um, if you're in there, he's going to provide that and he's gonna help you along with this temptation. And he, you will overcome temptation with joy. And there's a lot of temptation out there. You know, for some people, you know, it's alcohol. Some people, it's drugs. Some people, it's people. <laughs> and there's a temptation there. For me, it's Rolos. Oh, my God. I have this thing about chocolate. Not sure what that is. Um, I don't know. Kind of thinking about it now. But anyway. But this is Paul writing to the Corinthians right now. <laughs> and he's reminding them of what happened when the children of Israel, when they were saved from the Egyptians, and what happened to them. Um, some things that they did were this. They dabbled in idol worshiper, worship. Why would you do that? You, you, first of all, you were almost overcome by the Egyptians. And they were just about going to wipe you out. But then you get to the promised land. And then you start cutting up. I remember my grandmother used to say, girl, if you keep cutting up like that, I'm going to whoop you. Same thing he was telling them. He says here, they dabbled in idol worship and all these bad things, even after being saved from death. So you, and I'm, let's, let's talk in the natural right now for some of us here. You've been in a hospital. They didn't think you were going to make it. You come out, you go to church for two weeks. You leave, you forget, forget, forget the uh, fellowship or forsake the fellowship of others because you don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear all that. I just want to live my life. I've heard that many times by people. And then something happens to you again. But then you call the church folk to come in there to help you. I'm sorry. You could have stayed in the fold. And I think that we, we sometimes get uh, um, caught out there that way. Um, so, in the natural, even anticipated, that anyone understands a word or interprets it by its meaning, that culture he lives in has given that word. So, however, one of the basic problems in understanding the Bible is this. It's cultural definitions of what determines the interpretation of a Bible truth. So, because there is Bible truth, and then there's your truth. The Bible clearly outlines what to do. There's instructions in it. There's promise in it. Um, there's things that did happen that, you know, they were overcome by it. It gives you a, a, a straight up road map of what to do. However, you choose your truth, which is, um, it don't take all that. I've heard that before. Um, or I just want to live my life. I'm like, okay, you can live your life still. I mean, I live my life just fine. But those are the excuses that we get. You know, why don't you listen to the word? So our present day conception um, is in, in interpretation of that meaning of the word, we kind of miss the divine principles of, of what God is saying and how we should seek to impart that stuff in us. We don't see it anymore. We don't see that because you are interpreting it on your own, uh, um, your own words and your own thoughts and your own um, idea of what that is. And it's not that. There's clear definitions in what it meant at the beginning of time. He set that up already. So Webster says this about Thanksgiving, right? Webster says that Thanksgiving is the act of giving thanks, being grateful and acknowledgement of benefits or favors, an, ex an expression of gratitude for something received or done um, for a person or one. That's what it says. That's Thanksgiving. But that's not what the Bible means about it, um, by the word Thanksgiving. The biblical meaning of the word Thanksgiving is not something you do, 
it is not something that is also spontaneous um, or it's not extemporaneous expressions of of that thanks for some good deed you did or good that has come your way it has nothing to do with that the biblical concept of the word thanksgiving doesn't depend on something you have or you have received it has nothing to do with that this word is nothing to do with the outward circumstance it has nothing to do with it but rather it has something to do with that spiritual life and uh spiritual attitude towards your life and it's the balance of the spiritual attitude towards your life something that we never thought about we we've taken a word like thanksgiving and we've blown it up into this thing and and it's more than that the reason why it's more than that is because paul declared in philippians 4 and 11 that i have learned in whatsoever state i am therefore to be content and the amplified version says it this way not that i speak from any personal need or i have learned to be content and self-sufficient through christ satisfied to the point where i am not disturbed or uneasy regardless of my circumstance so to me, Thanksgiving then is a learning process because I have to learn to be thankful and to give thanks. Um, it's allowing the Holy Spirit to place within us contentment. And contentment means this, and I always have to define stuff because I don't want you to get misconstrued about what anything means. Contentment is a state of happiness and satisfaction. Are you satisfied with who you are right now? If you're not, you can change that real simple you can change it you don't have to just stay that way and I, I do believe that some people get stuck in a rut and they just want to stay there and they're like this is all I can be and I want to tell you that that's a lie you can be anything you want to be when you put your mind to it that's how we get up in the morning sometimes you, you you make a choice to get up you can make a choice to live differently you can make a choice to have a sound mind uh, you can make a choice to not believe the lie you can make those choices because he gave us that option to make a choice. So let's keep going. So the real praise of Thanksgiving then to God for everything in one's life because he has done what he did and he sacrificed so much for me. Here's my issue. I don't think any of you, and I'm not saying that, don't get mad at me. I don't think any of you would die for me. <laughs> I don't think you would. I do not think you'd sit there and go, you know what, Melanie's such a great person. I just want her life to be really good. I'm going to go ahead and lay down my life for her. I'm not sure many people would do that. Uh, they, that you know, thing in our head is going to click and you're going to be like, I don't know about getting shot for you. I'm not sure about that. I don't know about get, you know, dying for you. Um, but he did. He died for us so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. So the biblical thanksgiving is not what one has done, right? But it's rather that what one is and what one has become as a result of absolute and complete trust in Christ. And that is you abiding in him. And abiding means you're in with him. You're living there. You're lasting for a long time. You're enduring this whole thing out, but you're sticking in there with him. You're trying your best to be who you're supposed to be. And I think we get stuck at that point because you are choosing what you want to be, not who you're supposed to be. And I think that we have to change our thoughts about certain things. I, you know, I always thought that, um, I, I tried to be a doctor one time, right? <laughs> I went through med school for a portion of time in my life. Uh, a lot of people don't even know this whole story. And I was in, um, I guess they call it a clinic. Yeah, it was a clinic. And so we were, you know, working through some things and I was learning how to do needles and sticking people and stuff. And I always wanted to be a doctor, I did. I thought, you know, that would be a great profession for me. But then I, I, I started doing that job and I said, what in the world? I'm sticking, I couldn't find the vein on this poor little old woman. And I just felt like I was just jabbing her and hurting her and everything was happening. It's just the weirdest thing I've ever experienced. And it was hurting me at the same time too because I was hurting this woman. But I always thought I wanted to be that because someone told me that that was what I was supposed to be. And so as I got older though, things have started to change and, and I started to remember all of the things that happened in my life. If you read my book, you'll notice that in the front, front uh, few front pages, 
it has a little circles in there. And there's several different things that have happened to me, which most people would not have su survived. They, something would have happened, they would not have even made it through that. But I was, it was a setup, I think, with God. He said, I'm gonna make sure that, you know what, I cover you and I let you run through these things so that you can be that example for others. Um, everything that I went through, I've met so many people that have been through that and I've helped them come out so that they didn't get stuck in what happened to them. Like I said to you um, before, and I always say it on every show, I can't worry about what happened yesterday. I can only worry about what's happening today, can't worry about what's happening tomorrow until it gets there. And, and then it is what it is at that point. I'll just continue and keep walking in what God has for me. And I say, God, what, what are we doing today? What are we doing? I need to know so we can keep moving forward. How do we do this? Same thing with you, contentment. Are we content? He says it here, I've learned in whatsoever state I am, therefore to be content. That's what Paul says, he declared that to the Philippians. Be content, stop trying to be something you're not supposed to be. Seek God and ask him, who am I supposed to be? Father, what do you see for my life? Think about it, very serious. So in this Thanksgiving period, I want you to thank him just for your life. Some of you know you should have been gone. Um, you should have been dead because of the things that you, you did and some of the things that just happened and you didn't even know, you know that it was coming towards you. Um, driving on the road and somebody just about swipe you and then you just move off and you know anything could happen. So I want you to live your best life, but I want you to be thankful for it too. So let's talk about, like, again, the biblical thanksgiving is not what one does, but rather what it, um, rather it is what one is. I always got to say that, not what you do, but what you are. And be very careful there. Abide in him and he will abide in you. Keep that and understand that that's what he wants you to do. You, you can't be outside of him at all. You need to be in him. And again, in is a preposition that shows location, meaning you got to be a part of his life. He needs to be a part of your life. So if you don't even talk to God daily, there's a problem. You need to be talking to him when you get up, when you're uh, walking down the street, when you get to work, when you, everything, you need to give him a shout out, something. You really do, because you need to be in him like that, giving him thanks for the fact that you got to work on time. Thanks for the fact that, you know what, that car that just got swiped on the side that I saw on the road just um, yesterday, there were three car, three car pile up, but I wasn't in it. I'm thankful for that. So I said, Lord, I just thank you, but I ask you to cover the people that are in that car, Lord, that they, Father, either see you and they are uh, covered by you as they go through this trauma we got to do that, people of God. Please do that. Uh, so in the spirit, uh, it, it, you know, in the spirit in which one accepts all things, you know, our problems often that we have in mind that what a word means in definition of that word is we take it and we misconstrue it, don't even look at the real definition. And once you get it in your head that that's what that word means, man, it's hard for you to divorce it. It's very difficult for you to divorce what that means. That's happening a lot to everybody. People are hell bent on it being that word means that to me when it really doesn't. And and you, but you, that's your truth. I mean, you know, me and my husband talk about that quite often. That people have their own truth. That's what they do. They have their own truth. They don't care about the truth. Truth. They just care about their own truth. And I'm sitting there going, Lord, help them, Father. I just pray for those kind of people. I do. I pray for them because they need help right about now. So if Thanksgiving is a learning process, right, have, being thankful and telling um, of thanks and all that, if it's a learning process, then how do you get through it? Well, it's an act. You have to actually, it's an action word. It's learning. Learning means that I need to be doing something. I either be searching um, something to read about it. I need to be uh, experiencing it. Um, so that means today, when you're out there, even through the whole holiday season, try this, just try it. I mean, I do it all the time, just do it. I didn't think that I would ever be uh, one to do it either, because I'm a New Yorker. You don't really talk to a lot of people on the streets in New York, in my neighborhood. You just don't do that, unless you know them. 
it's just, just different. First of all, it's a huge, it's a small spot with a bunch of people in it. And so you need to be very careful. You can give them the nod or whatever, but don't speak to them. <laughs> so, not openly until, you know, there's some kind of engagement and you can do that. But you didn't do that. You didn't go on the subway and speak to people and, you know, just, hey, how you doing? Let me sit and talk to you. You had to kind of feel the situation out before you do it. But now, here I am in Texas, a little different. Um, I, I do have the openness to, to come out and, and speak. So I had to learn how to say hello, how to um, talk to people, to even give them a nod or smile even then. I, I never smiled when I was in New York. I always had this little grimace on my face. And, uh, but now I'm like always smiling, trying to show these pearly whites. And you know what? That's an inviting moment for people. They kind of like that. And then all of a sudden, they talk to you. And I'm like, oh, wow. It kind of threw me off a couple of times when I first did it, but I, I got through it. But then as I got into ministry and I realized that, you know what, that's a, a medicine for p people. Can you imagine being nice to somebody and all of a sudden they light up too because you said something or you gave them a word and it edified their body. That's thankfulness and thanksgiving to people. You just gave them something that they didn't have. And you know what? They walked away just the better. That's cool to me. <laughs> That's really cool. So it is that spirit which one accepts all things. But we got to make sure that we make up our mind. And that's the main ingredient, navigating your destiny. The word that I love the most um, because it makes so much sense. My mind is what de is determining what's happening to me. This head thing, this thing right here, is determining it all just because of what I think. And it's kind of scary because you can think some things. You can think that you're bad. And guess what? You will be. You could think that, you know, I'll never amount to anything. And yes, you will be. But he said that um, he gave us life and he gave us life more abundantly. Let's go back to the scripture here. He says, he, you, we have to learn to be content and self-sufficient through Christ. That's what it says. Satisfied to the point where you're not disturbed or uneasy by anything. So why are we walking around disturbed and uneasy? If you have him, you won't have that problem. Be content with where you are right now in him. But you need to be in him. I got to keep saying that, that it's really important that you're in him. Don't be content and you're not even a part of, you don't even know nothing about Christ and you don't even want to experience Christ. It's going to be very difficult to be content at that point. But you can be content in him because he said that he has us. He said, and you know, I'm going to use a, a, a slang term. He said, I got you. <laughs> I got you. That's what he says. If you read the scriptures, he pretty much says that. There's a lot about that. So I need, uh, there's so much I have to be thankful for. Um, when he was writing, it, remember we talked about when Paul was writing to the Corinthians and reminding them of what happened when the children of Israel. We don't want you to be in the children of Israel situation. You know, he liberated you and, and brought you out. Stay out. That's all. Just stay out. <laughs> That's all you could do. Stay out. Not a problem there. He liberated you. What is the issue? Why go back into drudgery when you already been freed? Then, you know, I know this, there's some slaves out there that did that, but the same problem. We're a slave mentality too, and we have to be very careful with that. So the spirit is the one that accepts all things. If you have the spirit in you, you can accept all things from Christ and all those things that he's doing. And just keep in mind what's happening to you. I just want you to be liberated. We're getting ready to go into a holiday spirit. And these things are going to be really difficult for some. And I don't want you to feel like that. I don't want that to happen to you because I want you to just have uh, freedom at during this time. Don't worry about what happened yesterday. Enjoy that day. Um, and then from there on, move forward. And you can start tonight if you want. If you're listening, watching me today, you can start anytime you want. It's just a simple make up your mind, just like you make up your mind about anything else. Make up your mind about following Christ. Make up your mind about being free and not having issues. I always tell the story. I don't have seizures anymore. I used to be so bound up that I fell apart and my body started doing really weird things. All of a sudden, I didn't know I was having a seizure and could have potentially not woken up because of that. So be very careful. 
I want you to be clean, your body clean, your mind clean, everything just just right with God and right with you uh, so that you can actually share that with somebody else and actually liberate them and help them come out too. Again, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about yesterday because you can't do anything about it. All I can worry about is for today. So Thanksgiving is a learning process for you. Stay in that space that is going to allow you to be Holy Spirit led. If you're not being ruled and led by the Holy Spirit, then there is a problem there. That means you don't know him. And I really want you to know him. Um, I want you to get to know him like I get to know him. I, I love the Lord. I love who I am today. Um, I love what's happening in my life. I love the fact that my household is clear. There's nothing going on. There's nothing chaotic, no pressures, no nothing. Um, I have a lot of fun in my household. It's, it's just calm and peaceful always got some good word going on and things happening um we even play stuff even at night we'll tell youtube got so much stuff out there that you can just let it play it ain't doing them but speaking scripture into your head but it's calming music and people out there singing some good music i mean find something that you can hold on to that will get you through this thanksgiving period because I want to change. I want you to, one, give up everything that is not good for you and say, God, I'm thankful for what you had me go through. I'm thankful for where you got me going. And I'm thankful for the future of what I'm going to be doing. That's, that's all you got to do. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. Abide in him and let him abide in you. Read your word. Go look at Ephesians 1. I keep telling you all that every time. Read Ephesians 1. That is the place right there. It's going to tell you who you are. We need to understand that we are powerful people. I just didn't realize how powerful I was until I read it. And I was like, you thought about me before the time of the world? You even knew who Dr. Mel was going to be. You had all good. You knew everything that was going to happen to her, and you knew that she would actually come to the fold, and, and she'd actually give in you did you knew and that's okay <laughs> he's a good guy he loves me he loves you too he really does so you're going to uh start doing that there's a few things that you can do yourself i think you should write it down though write down these things um and and understand that truth is real important the truth of it is it's in the word that's your truth don't let these things and people putting in your head be that truth because it's not going to help you. And I really promise you that it will not help at all. Um, that concept of Thanksgiving means that it doesn't depend on something you have or you have received. So don't think that, you know, that's what it is. But this word has nothing to do with that outward experience, appearance or circumstances. Nothing to do with that. But rather it has something to do with your spiritual attitude and the altitude that you have towards your life you gotta want to get that i promise you that there's got to be something you want to do i know we're getting close to time right now um but we're going to keep talking about thanksgiving even next week um you'll you'll hear another portion of this because i want to keep talking about thanksgiving because i need your mindset to change and i want you to understand where we're going and taste and see you got to taste it and see it for yourself and um, just walk in it, walk in it. I know this was a, uh, that Thanksgiving thing is really difficult for some, but you know, it's okay. We'll get through it because everybody doesn't want to, to understand how powerful the word Thanksgiving is, but it has nothing to do with that turkey that you will be eating or that dressing. Um, however, we do celebrate that time, but I do believe that my time is up. So, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Get your praise on this time. You know, be thankful and be thankful starting today. Have a good night.